right, everybody. What a game. Tough loss. Buffalo Bills. Uh, hats off. And Josh Allen played his ass off, first and foremost. So I want to take anything away from their performance as a team, their performance as entertainers. It was a, it was a great game. Are you not to entertain? I'm looking on Twitter and Chiefs Planet and, you know, Discord and uh, Chiefs Insider. There's a lot of places all over the internet. Uh, I'm not on Facebook anymore, again, for reasons. <laughs> but all over the internet, you know, everybody's blowing up. Everybody's got to blame somebody for something. And I, I see that in life a lot, you know. Like, I'm big on accountability, I'm huge on accountability, but I'm not big on blaming people. Like, that's n it's never been my big thing. And I see people blaming Kadarius Tony for lining up offsides. I see people blaming Matt Nagy because his name is not Eric Bieniemy. Like, Matt Nagy, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out here. Matt Nagy is every bit as good of an offensive coordinator as Eric Bieniemy is. Guaranteed. Okay, I also guarantee that Matt Nagy is not calling fumbles, and he's not telling Patrick to throw interceptions. He's definitely not telling people to fumble the ball, or to commit penalties, or drop passes, or any of these mental errors that are happening. You know, the wide receivers are not um, flattening their routes into zone coverage very well at all, finding little seams and spots in the zone and settling in, like... Patrick knows where the holes in the zones are going to be, and he's throwing to that spot where he thinks the receivers are going to be, and they're not there because they're not reading the same shit. They're just not on the same page. The chemistry isn't there. Now, did Andy Reid and Brett Veach kind of get lulled into a false sense of security by winning the Super Bowl last year with a bunch of bargain basement wide receivers on one-year prove-it deals and a few draft picks? Yeah, that seems to be the case. Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Matt Nagy, Eric Bieniemy, spun chicken nuggies out of chicken shit. Yeah, yes, they did. You know how Reid likes his nuggies. Likes Patrick's too. But I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not blaming them because it was, you know, the plan that they came into the season with was a good plan. You know, the execution has been shit. And when we kind of break it down a little bit more, you know, all right, the referees in the NFL are dog shit. They are. I can say that because I'm not paid by the NFL and I'm probably never going to be because I love the game of football. I like the product that they put out there, but I don't like how they present that product to people and I especially don't like how they manipulate that product via their refs. And... You know, I'm not going to sit and bitch about the refs, okay? That's not what this is about. That's definitely not being accountable. But, man, they've got a great point. The NFL, especially now that they allow gambling and the wide open and stuff, they've got an issue. And I think that as an entertainment entity, they're not too concerned about the integrity of their product because, again, are we not entertained? It was fascinating to watch. I mean, we're glued to the TV. Now, everybody's talking about it. Twitter's all a buzz, man. Oh, it's Kadarius Tony lined up offsides. Well, so did Von Miller. You know, Von Miller shouldn't even be fucking playing. And he punched his wife, punched his pregnant wife in the fucking face last week and got arrested for it. We've all had our moments, but, you know, same time, the reason why Patrick Mahomes is so mad at that line judge at the end of the game is because Von Miller lined up offsides. How come it's okay for Vaughn Miller to line up offsides, but not Kadarius Toney? You know, Buffalo got away with all kinds of holds. They were holding all game. And, you know, Green Bay also held all week last week. That pass interference that didn't get called on Marvis Valdez-Scantling last week. Well, this week, really, outside of the Kadarius Toney play, I think one of the hugest plays was the Latavius Murray reception, you know, the... Josh Allen puts the Superman cape on and throws the ball across his body as he's going out of bounds, and Latavius Murray never possessed that ball. That ball was never secured. Then he fumbled it. There's just so many botched calls all the way around. And it's not like they don't have the technology to get it right. 
and it's not like the rules are that wide open to interpretation. I mean, they kind of are, but that's just it. The officials don't enforce these rules. They just interpret them. And so that's what Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes are pissed off about. Kadarius Tony lined up in the neutral zone, but from what I got a text from a friend who was at the game right as the game ended, and he said, hey, Tony looked down at the line judge and checked, and the line judge nodded back like Tony was good. Okay, that's another reason that Reed and Mahomes and Tony are all pissed off is because they got fucked. Now, that being said, it's kind of on them to not be in that situation. Again, a level of accountability says you put yourself in that situation. Against Green Bay, why in the fuck were you down by eight? I mean, I get it. They're allowed to hold. I get it. You know, um, the, the levels of accountability are different for the Chiefs than they are for other teams. And, and, and so the same whenever you're the 49ers or you're any of these marquee teams. Like, you're expected to be fucking good. And the fact is, the Chiefs went out there and bumble-fucked around and wound up down 14 to nothing in the first fucking half and turned it on and, and had that shit tied going in the fourth quarter. Or, well, they were, uh, Buffalo had a three-point lead going in the fourth quarter and then the Chiefs tied it up in the fourth. Yeah? Had no fucking business only being down... One score going into halftime. Had no business tying that game up in the fourth quarter, but they're that fucking good that they really can just turn it on and do that. And it's like, you know, get more benefit of those calls if you're more consistent in your play. And people are saying, oh, well, they weren't this bad when Eric the enemy was here, so it must be Matt Nagy. I just want to remind everybody that correlation does not equal causation. And especially in football. Especially in life. Okay, it's a convergence of circumstances, just like anything in life. It's not one person's fault. I mean, yeah, Patrick Mahomes threw an interception. Yeah, there were some more drop passes. Okay, the wide receivers aren't flattening their routes off right. True. But also, how much of it is on those tackles? that have been playing like trash. I mean, the guy that replaced, you know, Donovan was good today, but Juwan Taylor's garbage. And how much does that play into Patrick Mahomes having happy feet and rushing his decision-making and rushing his throws and not stepping into his throws and his, his, footwork, his footwork this season has been pretty shoddy. Okay. How much of that is due to him pressing and thinking he has to do more because of these other circumstances. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the wide receivers. It's not like they're not in position to make plays. They're absolutely in position to make plays. Hell, the balls hit them right in the fucking hands, and a lot of times they're wide open when it does. Marcus Valdez scandling at the end of the Philadelphia Eagles game comes right to mind. Yeah, the ball was wet, but fuck, there was no one around you. And how many times have we seen Rice thinking about running before he secures the ball and just doesn't make the catch or fumbles as we saw today when he was trying to just fight for an extra half yard? It's like, fuck, catch the ball, secure the ball, and get the fuck down. Of course, you know, Patrick's pressing too. There was... In that whole, uh, in the in the series where Rice fumbled today, first down, Patrick had Rice off to the left on the dig route for uh, like a little five, six yard gain, but he pressed the ball downfield and was incomplete. So they come back to a dig on the other side and hit Rice, who tries to fight forward for maybe some of those yards that he would have got on first down, you know, and then he fumbles. So it's like, is it the chicken or the egg? It's not any one thing. It's just everything. Wide receivers not flattening their routes at the top and finding those spaces in the zone is huge because it's all of them. The drops are huge because it's all of them. It's not just one guy doing it. It's the whole group. And when one guy starts getting the yips, it spreads all of them, including Travis Kelsey and Noah Gray, the tight ends, and the running back. It just, you know, the whole team starts tightening up when that shit happens. So there's a psychology behind it. And because it's not just one guy... Because it is the entire group, that leads me to believe it is their position coach, wide receivers coach. I'm not even going to name his name. It's not fair to, you know, drag a guy through the mud. Fuck, he's probably already going to get fired. Um, if not tomorrow morning, Monday morning, uh, then at the end of the season, whether we win the Super Bowl or not. 
whether he moves to a different position within the Chiefs coaching ranks or if he moves to a different team. I do not foresee him continuing to be a wide receivers coach for the Kansas City Chiefs past the end of the season. If I were Reed and Nagy, I would consider firing him tonight. I'm not, and that's what troubles me about this whole ref thing, where they're going on and on and on about these refs. Okay, well, where's the fucking level of accountability in the room? You know, and I'm not saying throw people under the bus and look for somebody to blame, but there has to be a solution going forward. You know, the accountability just can't be like, yep, yeah, it's, you know, this is the issue and there's nothing I can do about it. You know, there is something we can do about it. And at the end of the game, you saw how fucking pissed Patrick Mahomes was. I mean, he was lit. Legitimately angry. In fact, I haven't seen him that angry in a while, if ever. I didn't know he would let that out in public like that. And I get it. You know, there was a long time when I would have never shown my emotion in public like that. But there comes a point where you have to keep it real. And you have to keep it real within yourself. And that doesn't mean just get mad. But that means let your voice be heard. And, you know, he's been cool and he's been nice to everybody. And he's, you know, let everybody kind of try and find their own way. And he leads by example. Trust me, I get that. But ladies and gentlemen, friends and lovers, brothers and sisters, honey baby sweetie dolls, let me tell you that there comes a point where if you do not hold the people in your life accountable, they will become complacent and by nature, they'll kind of test your boundaries. Not, not even, you know, on purpose, not like they're trying to. I don't think the refs are trying to test Patrick Mahomes' boundaries. They're just doing their thing. And other people are going to do their thing in their, you know, in your lives. Other people are going to test your boundaries, what you're willing to fucking take from them. And if they're conditioned to be allowed to be a certain way and to do things a certain way, then that's the way they're going to do them. And you can lead by example all you want. They're still not going to fucking take the hint. I've seen it. I've lived it. But at the end of the day, I had to look at myself and be more accountable. I think that's kind of where Patrick Mahomes is going to have to be. He's going to have to be more accountable. What that means is not accepting the lackadaisical complacency from some of the people around him. And not that they're doing it on purpose. I mean, what, they've won two out of three Super Bowls over a five-year period? Pretty fucking damn impressive. You know, some people might overestimate their abilities some. Also, there's the reality that in the NFL, if you're not moving forward, you're going backwards. And NFL defenses are constantly evolving constantly maneuvering strategizing and looking for ways to stop the best offenses in the league and Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs over the past five years have been the creme de la creme of the NFL and when you are the creme de la creme and you've won two out of three Super Bowls over a five-year period and you are the defending Super Bowl champions you are going to get everybody's best game this is everyone's Super Bowl. You think Buffalo wasn't pumped for this game, especially after the week they had? Their fucking coach getting dragged through the mud the way that he was? Whenever Patrick Mahomes threw that pass to Travis Kelsey on the Kadarius Tony offsides play, and Kelsey threw the ball to Tony, and he ran it in, you, they, the cameras panned to Josh Allen on the sidelines, and he had that fucking PTSD look in his eyes. He was like, oh, fuck, not again, every fucking time. Like, seriously, it was funny. I mean, I love watching the sidelines just as much as I love watching the game. I love the psychology behind it, the etymology. There's so much. It's such a fascinating specimen and microcosm of our society. And when a football team is good, it's because everybody works together. Everybody knows their role. It's clearly defined. They're not confused. They're not selfish. They want to do their role to the best. Of, they want to do their job and play their role to the best of their ability. So when everybody buys in and believes 
and lifts together, that's when a team is good. Because look, the talent levels in the NFL, pretty even throughout. I mean, really. And obviously the Chiefs have Mahomes and Kelsey, and they have a great defense. So you hit, like, Veach is great at evaluating talent and hitting players. If you have uh, good uh, scouting talent, then you're going to have a good team. It's up to coaches to put that chemistry together and put the players in the right position to win. But ultimately, it's about effort, chemistry, and cohesion, integrity, those things. The same things that will help you go far in life are the things that make you a good teammate in football. Is the same lesson. Right now, there's there's a little bit of lack of accountability on, on the wide receiver end, I think. You know, I don't want to call Marquez Valdez Scantling out. Marquez, I apologize, Marquez. Fucker. Catch a goddamn ball. I mean, I get it. It's football. It's not that important. Motherfucker makes $11 million a year to catch a football, and I'm like, I have no fucking money. So the fact it's like, throw me out there. I guarantee I will catch that motherfucking ball. Give me that motherfucker. Give me $25. Fuck yes, I won. It's like some of these guys, it's not like I'm saying that they don't appreciate where they're at. It's almost like they take it for granted. And like the Chiefs as an organization have been complacent this year. And I said at the top of the, the, the podcast that they were lulled into a false sense of security by last year's Super Bowl win. Budget bin, garbage ass, wide receivers, dollar store fines on one-year prove-it deals and draft picks. And they put it together and made it work. So they thought they could do that again. It didn't work. Well, the wide receiver coach, first-year wide receiver coach, isn't doing a good job. And that's on Reed and Nagy for allowing it, but I don't know exactly what's going on in that building. I can just see what I see and what I see on the sidelines. And the lack of accountability is what's troubling. Now, the good thing is, again, Patrick Mahomes getting pissed on the sideline and throwing that fucking helmet. Which bodes well for this week. Because the New England Patriots are actually not playing the worst football of their season. (laughs) They have a really good defense in New England. I know, shocker, Bill Belichick has a good defense, right? No, they're really good. And with the mistakes and the mental errors that this offense is making... This has trap game written all over it at this point. Especially how no game is guaranteed. You think that the Chiefs aren't going to get New England Patriots' best effort coming into town? Fucking New England's taking it personally that they got wiped from the fucking Monday night game. This game was going to be on Monday night football, but New England sucks so fucking bad nobody wants to see them. They're like, oh, the Chiefs are just going to beat the shit out of them. Well, maybe not. Not if they play like they played today, which, all bullshit aside, the point I was trying to make earlier... Even though the Chiefs played like shit today, they were tied going in the fourth quarter. Imagine how good they'd be if they weren't making those mental mistakes. So that's what I want to see this week. I want to see a team fired up by Mahomes, fired up by their coach, who, by the way, Mahomes and Reed have taken all the arrows for everybody this season. Like, personally. Like, everybody knows they're not, quote-unquote, the problems. But Patrick Mahomes... At the end of the Eagles game, well, maybe I couldn't, maybe I shouldn't have thrown it as far. Um, maybe Mar- Marquez Valdez Cantling should have fucking caught that ball. How about that? But, but Mahomes is a class act. Reed's a class act. They're not going to usually say anything other than, well, if we need to do better. I'll, you know, starts with me. That's what accountable people say. Hell, I say that shit well, even when I know other people have fucked up and fucked me over. And when they're people I love or people I care about, I'll double take the arrows for them. So that's how they are. That don't bother me none. But if they go out there and Rasheed Rice fumbles again, that's an issue. Kadarius Tony lines up offsides again, that's an issue. Juwan Taylor, I don't even want to single one thing out if he fucks up again. And we're stuck with him, you know, through the end of 2024. Can't even restructure his shit until year two. So he's going to be on this team next year. Do we draft someone? I don't know. I think our left tackle is actually a good. The guy that played today is good. I don't know. I don't have the answers. I'm not trying to look too far ahead in the next season because I really think, just like, again, life, there's so much correlation to life. I think this season is salvageable. I'm focused on the now. Here we are today. You know, what are we, eight and fucking six? 
holy shit. I think we lost six games the year we won the Super Bowl in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. I think we lost some games at home that we should have won that year, if I'm not mistaken. A Colts game comes immediately to mind. A game against the Texans that we got fucked by the refs in comes immediately to mind. But all the people on Twitter and Facebook, Chiefs fucking planet, just preaching all this doom and gloom, blaming Nagy, putting all the blame on the wide receivers. Yes, the wide receivers suck. We know it, you know it, they know it. Fucking pointing it out doesn't do a whole lot of good. Like, talk, oh, they need to be cut. They need to be fired. Really? You want somebody fucking coming to your job and telling you you need to be fucking fired? Well, then shut the fuck up. Because it's not fucking Matt Nagy's fault. It's not one wide receiver's fault. It's all the wide receiver's fault. That falls on the head coach and the fucking wide offensive coordinator and the wide receiver's coach, really. When, it, when the position group fails so spectacularly... It's never one person's fault. Just like in life, when something goes wrong. Dude, like, I could have looked at the last five years of my life and fucking started pointing fingers and blaming people for shit, but you know how much good that would have fucking done me? Zero. At the end of the day, I'm an adult, and I put myself in the position that I put myself in, and I have to be fucking accountable for that. Boom. That's all. It's about accountability. It's simple. You know, catch the ball with your hands, secure it, go down. Don't fight for extra yards, especially when there's fucking five Buffalo Bills there. Whenever you get to the top of your route, the safety's towards the middle of the field. You flatten out to the side of the field that the safety's not going to fucking provide support on. I don't even fucking play wide receiver. I play. I haven't fucking played football in 20, 30 fucking years. Three decades. And I know that. And the, the fact that the, all the wide receivers are having the drops, all the wide receivers have that issue, that's, that's on the wide receiver coach. They need to come out sharp against New England. Not fiddle fuck around. Not just act like, hey, we're the Chiefs. Travis Swift is here. Yeah, let's do this. Because make no mistake about it, Bill Belichick will have his team ready to play. Look at what they did against Pittsburgh Thursday night. Pittsburgh didn't think that New England had it in them. Hell, they fucking came out, scored three touchdowns at the beginning of the game. And Pittsburgh tried all they could to come back against that defense that whole game. Didn't happen. Bill Belichick has 10 days to prepare for this team. I think Steve Spagnuolo is going to eat Bill O'Brien's lunch. I don't know how much that fucking matters if this team can't get out of its own way. And let's look at it realistically. Every single game. They have been in. Every single game, they have beaten themselves. Buffalo didn't fucking beat them today. Buffalo tried to give that game away. Buffalo tried to hand it to us on a silver fucking platter. Same with Detroit Lions. They're not a good fucking team. They're so inconsistent. Fucking Green Bay, Philadelphia. All of them. And that leads me to looking at, you know, who do we have ahead? We got New England. Got uh fucking... San Diego, excuse me, Los Angeles Chargers coming up. Oh, and Herbert got hurt today. So Herbert's hurt, Burrow's hurt, Deshaun Watson's hurt, Trevor Lawrence is gimpy but playing, Lamar Jackson doesn't fucking scare me, Russell ain't really cooking, let Russ suck. You think you think Denver's gonna overtake us? No. Well, fucking Browning got hurt today in Cincinnati too. So, I mean, stop killing yourself, stop making the shitty mental mistakes, path to the Super Bowl is wide the fuck open even if you have to go on the road. Facts. Oh, this team ain't got it in them. Man, I went to a game at Arrowhead Stadium in January 2020. We were down 24 to nothing in the fucking second quarter. I turned to Twisted Chief. First down Elvis. I was sitting by. I told them motherfuckers, hey, Patrick Mahomes scored four touchdowns in one quarter earlier this season. He can do it again. We're going into halftime with a lead. Fuck this. It wasn't like I was some Nostradamus. I just had faith. You know, I was tired of the doom and gloom, and everybody was in shock, you know? Goddamn, go to hell. They didn't score four touchdowns, and we went into the halftime with that lead, and then we won the next two games, one of which was the Super Bowl. And I'm going to call it right now. I think the Chiefs run the table and win the Super Bowl. I think they get it together. I really do. Not because of anything that I've seen that indicates that they will, other than Patrick Mahomes being madder than a motherfucker, chewing nails at the end of that game. Took his helmet off, threw it, 
cussing at the ref. I've never seen him do that before, ever. Fucking, he's going to get fined for his post game. He can afford it. He don't give a fuck. Neither do I. What he said needed to be said. I give props to my dude for keeping it real. And that's real. You know, call the refs out. Now, also, that's fine to do on that podium and in public. But behind closed doors, it better not be a whole bunch of, well, we got fucked by the refs. We're good. No, we're not good. Every single person on that team needs to look at themselves in the fucking mirror and hold themselves accountable for what they have not done to take that next step. I've had to do it in my life, you know? I mean, Kadarius Tony at the end of the day, can't be like, well, the ref didn't warn me. Yeah, it was some bullshit. Or the fact that Kadarius Tony did look at the ref, looked at the line judge, and maybe even the line judge did nod him off. No matter, bro. Guess what? You were offside by a margin. It wasn't close. It wasn't a nitpicky call. It was only nitpicky in so far as that they don't call that shit a lot. It was nitpicky in how they did it. But did you line up offsides putting yourself in a position for that to even be a possibility? Yes, you did. So stand on that. You know, Patrick Mahomes, did you throw an interception? Yeah. Was that because Sky Moore sucks? Yeah. Why the fuck did you throw the ball to Sky Moore? That's what it is. Rasheed Rice fumbled. Why? Made the decision to not secure the ball and go down. You're fighting for the fucking extra yardage. How much more yardage were you going to get? None. You were already fucking down when you were fighting for more yardage. To fucking, you weren't going to go any further. Go the fuck down. Jalen Watson. Bitching about the fucking refs. Throwing that flag for illegal contact when he was easily 8 to 10 yards down the field. Holding on to dude. On that sack. On Jared Allen on third down. Nitpicky call? Yeah, it didn't affect the play one fucking iota. Allen wasn't looking that way because he was running the other direction fighting for his fucking life. Was it a shit call? Yeah, kinda. Nitpicky for sure. Did good Jalen just let that motherfucking receiver go down the field? Yeah, he could have just let him go. Because Josh Allen wasn't going to fucking find him and throw him the ball anyway. <sighs> so, you know. At the end of the day, you have to control what you can control. So I have to say to everyone on that team, young men, look at yourselves. Don't look at how shitty the referees fucking call the game because, oh, by the way, I don't know if anybody knows this, but the NFL's in bed with Vegas, and um, we're going to be seeing a lot of those shit calls depending on how much money's on the over or depending on how much money's on one particular team or depending on any number of variables that can come into play that you know ultimately as a player you really can't control you can only control yourself and your actions how you play how you approach and it's just like that in life you know i can't control what anybody else thinks what anybody else does how they respond but i can control myself i can control what i say i can control what i do i control how i react versus how i respond I don't react as much anymore. And it seems like all this ref talk is a bit of a reaction. Is it valid? Absolutely. Anybody who's watched these games these past few weeks, and, it, and it's been bad for a while. I've been pointing it out to people for a long time. Ten years. But it was terrible last week. And it was even worse today. I mean, it was a shit show. A fuck of a shit show. But... It's kind of on the Chiefs for letting it be that close. It's kind of on the Chiefs for not taking care of the things that they could take care of. Not fumbling. Not throwing the interception. Not that, again, I'm not blaming Patrick because I know, I saw what Skymore did. If the safety's coming over the top, you have to flatten out to the side of the field where the safety isn't. Period. And that's football 101. Why he didn't do that, I, I don't know. I'm not his, I'm not the wide receiver coach. I haven't talked to Sky more about that. Those are all correctable. But here we are. It's December. You know, we talked about having an extended preseason because of the wide receivers and how it was going to, you know, take a little time for it to gel. But the idea was that it would have gelled by now, and it hasn't. Like, this is not gelled. And the Chiefs can run the ball and play defense. That'll take you far in January. At the end of the day, you get behind 
to a team like Buffalo, you get behind to a team like Green Bay or Philadelphia or really anybody, and you, you have to pass the ball. You have to have people to catch the ball. And today, I, I earlier in the game, I saw Kadarius Toney streaking out, and Mahomes saw it and turned away from him and threw an incomplete pass to Kelsey. You know, you see this hesitation in his throwing, which is why you see the increase in sacks. You know, the tackles aren't good, so he, Mahomes doesn't trust his protection, so he's not in a safe space in the pocket, and he doesn't have that calm, so that makes him kind of get a little happy and not settle in to his drop. His footwork is shit this season because of those tackles, which does not help the situation with the wide receivers at all. And ultimately, that's kind of on coaches to correct some of this. And it's almost like they're complacent. So it's going to be a real interesting week. See what happens. See who wants to be accountable and who wants to step up. You know, like I said, I still think, just like I just like I still think I have it in my life, and like, you know, this I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to win, you know, despite everything that's happened, you know. It's been a shitty season for me, too. But, you know, I'm not giving up in my Super Bowl run, you know. I've got an outside shot at the playoffs. Well, the Chiefs have an inside shot. I mean, they're still leading their division. How the fuck are people going to write off a team that's leading their goddamn division in December? Because they play like shit? They play like shit and almost win. Like, they played like fucking shit today. They were terrible. Mahomes wasn't. He was pretty good. But he's always pretty good, even in his worst game. Fuck, he was almost 300 yards passing. Threw a touchdown. But, fuck, they were down 14 to nothing first quarter, wasn't it? I mean, they're from, playing from behind the rest of the way. Fumbling, interception, penalties, just stu- stupid, terrible, shitty fucking play. Not focused, not mindful. Not focused on the task at hand. Fuck around and turn around and still be tied in the fourth quarter. That's why I'm not giving up on that team. Fuck. You're a fucking fool. If you're going to give up on a team with Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. With that defense behind him? And Pacheco comes back? Shit. Andy Reid's going to fucking figure out a way. Hey, that dude coached a team to the playoffs. I want to say maybe was it 2013? or 20? 2013 or 2015, the Chiefs did not have a wide receiver who caught a touchdown. I think it was 2013. Won nine straight games, went to the playoffs, not a single wide receiver on the team caught a touchdown. He, he'll he figure out a way around this wide receiver issue. At the, like at this point, he you almost have to concede that they are not going to be able to be depended on and... There has to be an alternative. More running the ball. More screens. More tight ends involved. I personally, in my personal opinion, would go a lot more 12 and 22 personnel. 11 personnel as well. Two tight ends, single back. Two tight ends with double back. One wide receiver on the field. Yes, run the ball out of the fucking eye formation. Go more like a blue formation. You know, the pro set. Put... Clyde Edwards Hilaire and Isaiah Pacheco in the same backfield and run them and then play action out of those 22 personnel packages with two tight ends and two backs. And Rasheed Rice is your only wide receiver. Get your best five fucking pass catchers on the field. Run at those defenses that are susceptible to the run. Buffalo was getting gashed early in the game. Clyde Edwards Hilaire looked fresh. Get behind and you get away from the run and then you start throwing and the defense can tee off and Von Miller lines up offsides and the refs don't call it and they don't call holding. So then you're fucked. We've seen it. Quit letting them fuck you like that. That's my solution. Start pounding the fucking ball. You know, defenses in the NFL, just like anything in life, again, so much symmetry to life, they're reactionary. You beat them one way so much, they're not going to let you beat them that way again. That's why teams started taking away the deep ball on the Chiefs and Mahomes. That's why the Chiefs traded Tyreek Hill away. Because fucking everybody's playing these deep shell cover two, cover four. 
not letting anybody beat him deep, not letting Tyreek beat him deep, well, if we just got to throw underneath, then we can get any wide receivers, right? It worked last year, but it didn't work this year. So defenses are geared to rush the passer because it's a passing league. Everybody's spread. They got this spread offense. Wide open, everybody's playing fast. We got these fast wide receivers, so defenses are fast, man. They got pass rushers and quick cornerbacks that can keep up with all these fast guys, right? So they're all susceptible to the run, really, except except San Francisco. Unless you've got a guy named Bosa on your team, you might be able to get ran on some. Most teams, you can run on them a lot, especially if you put an H-back or fullback in front of a tail and slam at him, like 24 ISO, power O, you know, old school Lombardi style. You get a fucking seal here and a fucking seal here, and you run right through this fucking alley here. You know what I'm saying? That type of shit. Matriculate the ball down the field, but use your backs. And you read did it in Philadelphia with uh, Brian Westbrook. You motherfucker went to a Super Bowl with Terrell Owens uh, on the team that year. But if you remember, Terrell Owens broke his ankle and was out through the playoffs. So he had fucking dog shit like Hank Basket out there catching the ball. He had our former uh, wide receivers coach, Greg Lewis, out there, who I wish was here. But look at Baltimore and how they're balling out with Greg Lewis as their wide receiver coach. or uh, Is he the offensive coordinator now? I don't know. Uh, but I know he went to Baltimore, and they're fucking balling out. But Lamar Jackson don't scare me. These Chiefs wide receivers kind of do. I'm more afraid of this team beating themselves than any other team in the league. It's been an interesting season, you know. Um, I don't know. It'd be cool to have somebody come on, to have a guest come on and talk Chiefs with me um, after the New England game. I don't know. We'll see. Some kind of like a post-game analysis type thing. You know, now that we're getting into it. So maybe I'll see if uh, Whoopi will want to come on or somebody. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, it's all about having a good time. Remember that. I had some friends over last week for the Green Bay game. And one of my buddy, too, he was like, really? He was apologetic. He was like, man, I'm sorry the Chiefs lost. Uh, like, I'm not. We ate, we ate good food. We smoked a lot of good weed. We laughed. We made jokes. Had a good time with the people I care about. What's there to be sorry about? Like, I want them to win. But, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't define me. Sharing those moments with the people we care about. That's what it's all about. Uh, be safe. Uh, shoot us a like on Spotify. Follow the uh, YouTube page. And, um... You know, we'll talk to you soon. Go Chiefs. Mm -hmm.